Well, good morning. I'm really excited to be back in Polk County at the Florida Air Museum. I want to thank them for hosting us. I also want to thank Attorney General Ashley Moody for being here for this morning's announcement. we got a lot of other good folks who I will bring up um, in time. I do want to recognize uh, we have the uh, mayor of, of Lakeland, uh, Bill Mutz, and then we have all the commissioners, I think, from the city, or many of them have come uh, for this announcement, so we want to thank them very much for what they're doing. Uh, we've been very uh, clear in the state of Florida that, that we want people to be able uh, uh, to work and provide for their families. That's something that's very, very important. We've been able to do uh, a lot of good things with the economy, given all the headwinds we're seeing nationally. You just saw the GDP number come out, anemic, uh, far below what it was supposed to be. September jobs, 194,000 nationwide. Florida. In September, we had 84,500 jobs created in Florida. Uh, so we are, uh, and then clearly businesses are doing so much better here than they are at um, almost any other place of the country. Uh, and so, so we're happy with that, and we want to continue uh, to offer opportunities for people. And we've just made very clear, as you now are in an era where there are these heavy-handed mandates that are being hung over people's heads that threaten to deprive them of the ability to earn a living, that in the state of Florida, you know, you have a right to earn a living, and it should not be denied to you uh, based on these shots. And so we want to protect people uh, who are working now in the state of Florida. These people have been working the whole doggone time, and then now all of a sudden they're going to get kicked to the curb? Give me a break. And then we have all these people who uh, work for p police and fire. You have some of these local jurisdictions that are trying to, to penalize some of those folks um, uh, for that. And we just think that's wrong. Of course, there's a lot of federal mandates uh, that are coming down. There's this, this OSHA rule that we're waiting for that applies to all, every business over a certain amount. There's a federal contractor rule, and then there's a uh, CMS rule that's going to threaten to take away Medicare, Medicaid funding for health care institutions that don't, that don't force this on everybody. Um, in Florida, uh, we believe that these things, um, you know, are choices based on individual circumstances. You know, there are physicians that will recommend one course of action or another based on your health history. And, of course, we know that many people, after now this has been going around for uh, well over a year and a half, you know, many people have recovered from COVID and also have uh, strong immunity uh, through, through prior infection. Uh, so, so you see that, and that's really what it should be. We also cannot have the federal government coming in exceeding their power some of the stuff that they're doing with the with the federal con they're really rewriting contracts and they're transforming normal contracting into basically public health policy and that's not anything congress has ever authorized uh, and so that's a huge problem of course the osha rule is a heavy-handed mandate never authorized by congress they're using really obscure provisions to try to jam something down that will really have a significant impact all across the board. Uh, so, so we do have a responsibility to stand up uh, for our, our authority here to govern ourselves uh, and also make sure that this constitutional system of ours isn't out of whack. Um, but there's also a practical uh, issue with this, and I think you'll hear from some of the folks. Uh, if you do this, if you, if you force this, there's going to be an attrition of people. People are going to lose their jobs. They're going to get fired. Others may just voluntarily uh, walk away. That is going to throw a huge wrench into the operations of so many different aspects of the economy. And right now we're in a situation where, I mean, yes, we're happy in Florida. People are looking to us. We've done a lot better. But the United States as a whole ain't exactly lighting the world on fire when it comes to the economy right now. So why would you want to be able to do that? Do you think this is going to help the supply chain problems uh, that we see? Uh, do you think it's going to help lower gas prices? Is it going to help all these problems that we need to do? No, it'll, if anything, it will exacerbate. Uh, so practically, it just doesn't work. It's not something uh, that, is going to, uh, that is going to work. So last week, we uh, announced that, that Florida what, was going to be taking action. And so today, we have um, additional announcements along those fronts to be able to protect people, to be able to protect their jobs to protect their livelihoods and, quite frankly, protect the, the whole economy so that it can continue to function. Uh, we are nearing the, the agreed-upon dates with the legislature for the special session. I said it would happen in November. It is. Uh, I should have those dates uh, hopefully today, and I'll be signing that proclamation either today or tomorrow. So we'll have the fixed dates. We'll know when we're coming in, and we know what we need to do. And the main course of business will be, you know, make sure 
people are able to keep their jobs. Uh, we are not going to deny people the ability to earn a living uh, based on their decisions uh, about an injection. Uh, the second thing that we're do doing here, and I had promised last week that we were, of course, needing to pursue uh, legislation through a special session, which is what we're going to do. Uh, but I also made very clear, given the nature of some of these mandates and how they raise uh, questions about the federal government overstepping its authority, we are also going to need to pursue litigation. And so I'm happy to say today uh, that with uh, thanks to the Attorney General uh, Ashley Moody's leadership, uh, today the state of Florida has filed uh, another lawsuit against the Biden administration. This lawsuit challenges the Biden administration's order uh, imposing a vaccine mandate on federal contractors, which was uh, starting was going to apply on December 8th. And so just because you're a business that does it has federal contracts, it's not right for the federal government to come in and rewrite those contracts and then try to shoehorn this in. And then if you don't comply, so you either have to fire people or if you don't comply, they'll just cancel the contract entirely, even though this is something that you bid for and you won fair and square. Not the way, that's not the way we think business should be done. We don't think that they have the authority uh, to do that. But you are going to see, if, the, if we're not successful challenging this, you will absolutely see disruptions in the economy. I mean, just think of all the airline workers that, that, are, that are balking at this. I mean, we've seen different issues in different, different airlines, and I know that there's very many uh, more. So... This lawsuit is filed in the Middle District of Florida uh, over in the Tampa Division, and we are going to seek a preliminary injunction so that this mandate isn't allowed to be imposed at the expense of the jobs of Floridians. And we've got a very big footprint in Florida of companies that do do contracting work for the federal government. We've got a lot of them over on the Space Coast of Florida. Of course, we have defense contractors. We have a bunch. And uh, there's a lot of folks uh, that'll be in the crosshairs on this. I think there'll be a lot of folks nationally, but Florida, we've got to be one of the top states in terms of who would be most affected uh, by this. We don't want people to lose their jobs, and we obviously want to keep business going. We want people to be able uh, to want the economy to be able uh, to continue uh, function. So we think it, uh, well, we know that it, it exceeds the administration's authority under the current law and constitution. And, and I think we're going to be successful uh, in this in this regard. Um, this is uh, the OSHA rule. That one hasn't even come out. Still, that still hasn't it not come out yet after all these after all these weeks. And I wonder whether it's not come out because it's got a lot of problems. I mean, there's not going to be, I think, a very clear path for that to go to go forward. Uh, but but this federal contractor lawsuit is not the contractor rule has not gotten as much play as the OSHA, and these are distinct things. Contractor, I think, has a more limited application in terms of the number of employees it will affect, but I think the bite is probably even more uh, because you're really putting these businesses in an impossible situation where they would potentially lose uh, a lot of their contracts or a lot of their money that, that is able to sustain them. We are, though, continuing to monitor what is happening with the OSHA rule. We will continue to do that. We're also monitoring what the uh, what is happening with the CMS rule and how that would affect the health care I mean, just think about it. We've, we've heard for months and months and months how hard it is to get enough health care personnel, how nurses are in short supply. Some of these nurses that are contracted out, they'll travel around the country. Huge, huge money in that. It's very expensive to hire those folks because the demand is so high and the supply is low. And so to impose this mandate on that industry, uh, if you even have a small number who end up a small number of attrition. That is going to be huge. That is going to be very difficult for a lot of these uh, institutions to be able to function. But again, they're going to be put in a rock and a hard place because they're going to have their funding uh, through most of their patients that they serve uh, potentially uh, limited. We don't think that that's, that's constitutional, but nevertheless, that's the stakes that we're dealing with. So here we are. Uh, we said we'd take action, and we are. Uh, this lawsuit has been filed. Uh, we think that we can get a, hopefully get a preliminary injunction and be able to protect people's jobs uh, from this mandate coming in um, and kicking uh, a lot of good people out of work. And I want to thank the Attorney General for, for her work on this. 
All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us here at Golden State Times. If you're new to the channel, we encourage you to subscribe by clicking that middle button. Also, check out our previous video by clicking the video on the right or a video you might enjoy by clicking the video on the left. Also, don't forget to click the thumbs up button and share this video on social media. Peace.